I will be covering how to take a piece of round stock and uh, put it in a four jaw chuck. Four jaw chuck is nice if you have a regular piece of stock uh, such as a square or something odd and you can tighten each jaw individually. That can make you know one jaw way over here while the other one is way back and kind of grip that odd piece. For round stock, using a three jaw is nice because it self-centers. You crank on the chuck and all three jaws move towards the center. And then that would also center the stock. But I don't have one, so I'm going to make do. Uh, I begin by getting the piece in there, eyeballing it, and you know, cranking it, each of these individually to try to center it. And then after that, I use these uh, grooves on the face of, of the chuck and I try to get the ends of each jaw to line up with, you know, in this case it's the third line. And uh, if you spin, I actually disengage the belt so that I can uh, spin this easily. If you spin it around, you can see it's at zero, so it's, it's really not even touching this, this indicator. Um, this indicator here, it's got a dial, and there's this little spring in this ball here. And when you put pressure from the back side, it moves that dial up and down. It's attached to the lathe uh, by this magnetic base. You can just uh, hit this button and then the thing doesn't move. Uh, and then it's on the carriage, so I'm going to advance the carriage uh, away from us and uh, back, toward, back towards the camera. So right now, spin it, nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on uh, sets of jaws. So the one here and then the one in back and once I get that where I like it I'm gonna turn it and then uh, I'm gonna do the, these two opposite sets of jaws and then I'll check it but I'm gonna work in pairs essentially uh, so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go ahead and advance you can when I spin it you can see it, it looks okay it does it's not like really wobbly but a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and advance the carriage as I spin it until I get some movement and there's a little bit I'm going to do a little bit more though. So, okay, so some real obvious. You can see it go way up there. Right there. And that's about uh, seven. There's like seven little notches. Uh, so I'm going to work with this jaw and then I'm going to turn it 180 and it's at zero. So that tells me right now, I'm going to do that again, 180. It tells me that the piece of stock is closer to the camera uh, than it is on this side. So that means instead of the piece of stock turning like a rotisserie, it's moving towards the camera and away from us. It's kind of doing that. So I need to basically tighten this side as I loosen this side. If I had two keys, I could do it at the same time, but I don't. So what I will do is, let's give a little crank here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's already pretty tight, so I need to loosen this side before I tighten any more, I'm just going to mar the surface. So, loosen it. And you can see it's a little wobbly in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten this side to get it to zero. Let's go 180, zero, 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 zero. So I'm happy with that. You can see it's still moving up, so I'm going to turn it uh, to where it goes up. And you can see it's at, now I'll, now I'll work with these two sets. So it's at about two, and then flip it, nothing. So that means I got up, again, it's, it's telling me that there's pressure being put from the back side towards us, so I need to crank it on the front side. And I just did it a little bit, and it went to zero, so, um, or almost went to zero. So that's pretty good. So everything's at zero. So I'm gonna go forward again until I get something. And I'm going to go a little more. So, we're at f just stop at the most dramatic. So, we're at about five, and the opposite side were a little above zero. So, five and zero. So, that means I'm going to go back to five, and I'm going to have to uh, tighten on this side. So, I'll loosen the back a little bit. Just I just loosen it just a little bit. And then on the front, I'll tighten it about the same. And obviously, I just did the opposite thing, so I did it too much. Um, so go to five, I tighten it from the front. One, two. So we're at five and two. You can see that the dial is at two, 
and the opposite side it's at five. So it means I gotta loosen it on the back side again. And I'm basically just gonna keep doing this until I get an even reading. Um, just a little bit. So we're at about three. I'm gonna tighten it just a, just a tiny bit. So four and three. So I'm gonna tighten the front side of the bigger number. About three and a half and about four. So you can kind of see I'm getting a lot closer here. Um, and you can see why it's kind of a pain to kind of go back and forth. I mean, this doesn't take me, you know, five, five minutes to do. Uh, it could take, it'd be quicker if I had two keys and it'd be even quicker if I had a self-centering three. So I'll keep doing this until I get, let's say, two all the way around. There's one on this and there's too much on that. So I need to... Again, working in pairs, go to the front and the back. If it's the number's too big, then tighten on the front. So I'm going to say two and a half. Here I'm at three. Crank it so it goes down to, let's say, three. And three. So you can kind of see as I spin, the whole thing goes between two and three. So I'm going to keep fine-tuning this, going from front to back, and then the other set of jaws front to back until I get everything to hover at a constant number which I'm guessing will be about two and a half you know I could back it off and get everything to balance at zero but then I'm not sure if it's dipping below zero so I like to go on a, a whole you know a, a number above zero one between one and five or something so let's just go higher because it dips below zero so we're gonna try to aim for three so three in the front, three in the back, go to the other jaw, we're at three, we're a little over three, we're so super close. In a case like this, I would probably call it, I'll have to loosen on the back a little bit. I know that's pretty good. I would probably uh, tweak it a little bit, and then I would go ahead, face that piece of stock, and then I'll put a live center since it's uh, a little long, and then I'd start um, uh, machining uh, the front here. So that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and get started on a couple pieces and um, go from there.